Praise the Lord. Welcome to Sunday morning service. Are you excited to be in the house of the Lord this morning? I'd invite you guys to stand up with us as we go before the Lord in prayer. Dear God, we're so thankful for this opportunity to gather together in your name. We are here in one accord, God. We're gathered for one purpose. That is to glorify your name, to magnify your name, to lift you high, God, to give you praise for you are worthy. You are worthy. Oh, God, we praise your name.
Psalms 103, 1 through 5 says, I bless, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my God, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with love and kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. 2 Corinthians 1 and 11 says, in the New King, New King James Version, it reads, You also, helping together in prayer for us, that thanks may be given to many persons on our behalf for the gift granted to us through many. Amen? Us praying together, coming together for those who are in need, it works. Amen? It has, pr it has power. So if you're able, we ask that you stand at this time. We'll go to and declare our prayer declarations this morning. Uh, we want to lift up the name of Donna Waddle. She's a, the mother of the best friend of one of Lori Osterberger's best friends. She fell and broke her hip this morning or this week. So we pray that uh, the Lord gives her a healing touch. Uh, We're going to lift up the name of Lillian Riley. She's the aunt of Rachel Niece. She was diagnosed with lung cancer this week, so she needs a healing touch. We want to lift up Sister Adara Hernandez. She's recovering from surgery. Uh, speaking with Doug this morning, she all goes well. She, she will be released this morning or this afternoon from the hospital, so we continue to lift her up. We want to lift up Kayliana Graff. She had to have emergency surgery this week. She's recovering well. anyone else who needs prayer for this morning the ministry team is here feel free to pour forward we have the oil as we pray for sister friend amen from the Lord. Amen. All unspoken signify by the raising of hands. Amen. Heavenly Father, we appreciate you this morning. We thank you for the mercy and grace which you have bestowed anew. Lord, we thank you for this morning in which we are free. Free indeed from, the, from our past, Lord Jesus. Free from our pain. Heavenly Father, we ask that you guide and move us each other. We thank you for the mercy and grace that you have bestowed upon us again. Oh, Heavenly Father, we ask that you take these prayer requests that are spoken and unspoken. Move throughout this house, Lord Jesus. Provide a healing, a comfort where it's needed, Lord. Salvation for loved ones. Lord Jesus, we lift you up. We praise you. We give you glory and praise in all that you are and all that you do. We give you the glory, Lord. Looking forward to testimonies once again. How you have delivered and guided and brought us back. In your name we pray. The congregation says, in Jesus' name, you may be seated. Some short announcements for this week. Uh, all of these are listed in your bulletin. You can continue to, to uh, read your emails. Stay informed. Lots going on. An active church. Amen. Tuesday will be our church fast day and corporate prayer uh, here at the church at 630 Wednesday, we will have uh, Bible study and kids power hour at 7. End time life group will be meeting again this Thursday at 6.30 here in the church basement. See the banks if you have any questions concerning that. If our ushers will come forth at this time. 
Our offering scripture this morning is found in the book of Deuteronomy. Chapter 16, verse 17. I brought my glasses this week so I can read this one this time. <laughs> Every man shall give as he is able, according to the blessing of thy God, which he hath given thee. Heavenly Father, we ask that you bless this gift and the giver, Lord Jesus. We take this gift further to the kingdom, that it may go forth to spread your word, your healing touch, your glory, and your freedom. In your name we pray. Amen.
one greater, no one better. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Are you thankful for the goodness of God this morning? Are you thankful for that new name written down in glory? Are you thankful for that reason to dance? Are you thankful that we praise a God that has none other like him? Hallelujah, hallelujah. I love you, Lord. For your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands.
time. Come on, church. All my life you have been faithful. Declare that out. You've been faithful. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been faithful. So have been changed come on the glory came down at youth congress they say oh it'll just be one service when they get back it'll just be one service man you know how that is but the glory of God came down in that place and there was anointing there was calling hallelujah and these young people have been changed That was really the first one I got to go to. And the Lord said, Bobby, if you would if you would have quit coaching football a long time ago, you could have experienced that a little bit earlier in your life. But that's all right. God gave me a word there. Come on. And I believe, hallelujah, the power that was in that place is beginning to sweep across the United States of America. Woo! 35,000 young people. What movement is like this movement? Come on. Buy the truth and sell it now. Buy the truth. Come on. It's not time to back up on what you believe. It's not time to take a back seat to the enemy. Hallelujah. Hebrews 4. Chapter 4, and we 
speaking from the book of Hebrews today. Come on, we got any radical people in this place? Radical prayer, radical fasting, radical giving. Come on, don't say you're radical and you don't want to give a sacrificial offering. Don't say you're radical and you don't want to fast a meal. Don't say you're radical and you don't get up and spend time with him. But it's the hour, oh hallelujah, that the radical apostolics come forth. Woo! Chris Green preached, where are the apostolics? COVID led to apathy. People became apathetic. Now I got an excuse to not go to church. But guess what God also did during that time? He started bringing forth radical people. It's the house of God. Oh, David said, I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. We might get to this text today. Hebrews 4, chapter 4, verse 3. For we which have believed do enter into rest. As he said, I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of this world, of the world. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on the wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his works. And in this place again, if they shall enter in to my rest. And I want to preach this morning. Entering into his rest. Entering into his rest. Let's pray, Jesus. We thank you this morning, God. God, let your people. God, let your people this morning. God, come and rest in you this morning, God. God, that they would receive a new wind, God, in their spirit. God, that they would receive the joy of the Lord in their spirit. That they would receive the peace in their spirit this morning, God. Hallelujah. God, we give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah, hallelujah. When we talk about the book of Hebrews... What a mighty book. It's full of whoever the writer was of Hebrews. We don't know, and that aggravates me. (laughs) I want to know who wrote it. Some people think Paul wrote it, a lot of early church fathers. But it's not written like a letter from Paul. There's no salutation, no greeting. There's no signing off on the letter. Some think Apollos. Some think Barnabas. Hallelujah, but we look at the book of Hebrews, he's definitely speaking to a Jewish audience. And we say, well, what does that have to do with us as Gentiles? Come on. Don't say, I'm not going to pay attention to that part of the book, because it's, (laughs) come on. Don't pick and choose what you want to read and what you want to hear. I believe we can glean something this morning from the book of Hebrews. Hallelujah, and he's talking to this Jewish audience. But they were a Jewish audience, hallelujah, that were messianic, if you will. They had come to follow the message of Jesus Christ. Come on. Some of you are apostolic, but you're questioning. Some of you are apostolic, but you're wondering. When God gives you a truth, he gives you a truth. See, what happened here, what happened here is these believers were, were being come after by Judaizers. Say, so you really believe this Jesus message? And they were beginning to doubt their faith and question their faith. We see in Acts 15, the Jerusalem council, right? And all this war and fighting over circumcision. But Paul was was adamant in what he was doing. And this audience had received the message of Jesus. But they were beginning to doubt. They were beginning to be pulled away. 
Verse 3 in chapter 2, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. Let me tell you something. You're not going to get any rest if you start neglecting this salvation. You start neglecting your salvation. There will be no rest in your spirit. When he called you, when he chose you, when he brought you out of darkness into marvelous light, now is not the time to question. We must be firm and adamant so we can have rest in our spirit. Hallelujah. He is not the author of confusion. Jesus is the author and the finisher of your faith. And if you want rest this morning, you've got to rest in him. So whoever the author is here, he's appealing to them that Jesus is superior. Come on, they had put Moses on a pedestal. They had put Moses up here, and he begins to appeal to them that Jesus is superior to Moses. See, God gave Moses the law, right? (laughs) It's going to be written on tablets, but they come down, and and the Levitical priesthood is worshiping a golden calf. That's the Levitical priest. Read the book of Hebrews when it talks about Jesus. And we've just been talking to our Spanish about Jesus from the tribe of Judah. Because the Levitical priesthood couldn't bring rest. Sacrifice after sacrifice. Pushing the sins forward again another year. Only to face them again in another year. But Jesus said, I have come and died once and for all. we got to get people that are resting in the Lord because you have a radical relationship with Jesus. You are in love with Jesus. You know what happens to people? They focus on the rules and regulations. Don't do this. Don't do that. And what happens? We don't find them anymore. But if you will get a radical relationship with Jesus Christ, you won't have any problems with rules and regulations. You won't have any problems with commandments. You won't have any problem with this doctrine. Come on, if you can get some rest, hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah, what a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Hebrews 1, God who at sundry times and divers manners spake in time past unto the Father by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world, who being the brightness of his glory, and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, uh, sat down on the right hand uh, of the majesty on high. Here, here, verse 4. Being made so much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Woo! Wow. Think about why didn't Why wasn't he just made an angel? Because he couldn't come to earth and feel what you feel. He couldn't be tempted in all points. Come on. Some people got off on this divine flesh revelation years ago. Jesus had no. Jesus had flesh like you and I. He suffered. He suffered in his flesh. See, Jesus, when the temptation come, we ask the Lord, lift it off of us. Lift off this. It never got lifted off of him at the cross. He took it all on him. So don't think you can't be free this morning. Don't think you can't enter into his rest this morning. Don't think that you're being held up and you can't get free from it. Don't 
think that you can't be made whole this morning if you got a sickness in your body. He took all of it on the cross. He said, enter into my rest. so much in here. I don't have time to get to it all. But chapter 4, let us therefore fear, lest the promise being left of us entering into his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it. Are you worried about your brother and sister coming short of this rest? How often are you thinking of your brother and your sister, hallelujah, that might be struggling in the Lord, that might need a word, that might need a prayer, hallelujah, come on, this world will drive you into selfishness, but we've got to become selfless like Jesus, we've got to enter into his rest so that we have enough inside of us to minister to people. See, when you're not entering into the rest of the Lord, all you think about is me, myself, and I. But when you are in the rest of the Lord, uh, hallelujah, and you have entered into the rest of the Lord, you start to worry, where's that brother? Where's that sister at church? Uh, Oh, have we prayed for him? Have we set aside a meal for him? When you're bound up, you can't worry about anything. Unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. For we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. See, the question before you today, are you going to walk out of here the same? As you came in those doors, you know what? I'll I'll worry about it Sunday night. I'll just take care of it tonight. God's asking you to take care of it right now at this altar. He's asking you to lay it down, give him this yoke, give him this burden that you're carrying, and begin to put his rest upon you, put his yoke upon you. Verse 6, seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached enter not in because of unbelief. Unbelief. A whole generation had to die off because God said there's only two that believe. A whole generation dies off. Don't let that happen to you. Don't say, I'll take care of it later. And the years go by. And the months, and it goes by and by and by. And you never take care of it. You never enter into his rest. Altar call after altar call. But now is the time. Today is the day of salvation to enter into his rest. about Joshua and Caleb? Well, they go in and then they battle at Ai, battle at Jericho. It wasn't the rest. See, when you receive the Holy Ghost, there is a joy that comes upon you. They didn't have what we have. We have the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. You can rest in your spirit. Hallelujah. Today you can find rest in him. Because the joy of the Lord is my strength. Uh, Hallelujah. If you will enter the joy of the Lord today, you'll find a strength. uh, Oh, that comes through that rest uh, in him. Come on. I'm not talking about a vacation. I don't know when the last time I had a vacation was. I don't know if my wife even believes in vacation. I'm not trying to be like Elon Musk and never take a vacation. So I'm praying next summer I can take a vacation. (laughs) Come on. I'm not preaching on that today. The Lord, oh, I'm going to take this service off because I need rest. Well, well, you might miss something that God wants to do. What I'm talking about is a rest in your spirit. A rest from the warring. A rest from the fighting. 
See, this is what's happening. Some of you are saying, God, I'll sit on that pew, but this is what I'm doing to you. I'll sit on that pew. Think about high school students. What do they do now when they don't want to hear you? They put their hood on. They put their hood on like this. I'm not hearing you, teacher. Then they go a step further, and they put their headphones in. This generation is facing more hearing loss than any other generation because they walk around with these things in their ears all day long. Don't come to church and you tune him out. Say, God, I'm doing my duty because I'm here. And you won't worship. You won't lift your hand. You won't shake a leg. You won't be moved. Oh, God, don't, don't sit here and not be moved by the power of the Lord and not be moved by the Spirit of God. See, that's what happened to that generation. They would not be moved. And God said, well, Joshua and Caleb will go in then. Verse 11, let us labor therefore to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. He, he, he knows right where you're at. He can see into your soul where maybe no one else can. He is discerning your thoughts and the intents of your heart. It's easier to obey God than to, than to just keep fighting with him. He's calling some of you to lay something down today. But you're fighting with him. God, I can't let go of that. God, I don't know about that. God, I'm not ready for that. I'm not ready for that commitment. So what happens? Service after service, no rest. You go home weary. Struggle after struggle. And you can't get peace. And what he's calling you today is to come down here and let it all go before him and say, it may be hard, it may be difficult, it may be too much for me, but oh, hallelujah, God, if you will take it from me, hallelujah, I want your rest, I want the peace of the Lord. I'm telling you, you don't want to struggle anymore, you don't want to battle anymore, you don't want to fight anymore. See, some of you say, why do I feel so attacked all the time? Why do I feel like I'm fighting all the time? Maybe it's not the enemy. Maybe it's your flesh. Maybe you're fighting with him. But you think you're fighting the enemy. Because your flesh says, nah, I'm not there yet. Well, the longer your flesh says, I'm not there yet, the longer you're going to wander in the wilderness. And it's time this morning, I plead to you. Oh, I plead, I appeal to you this morning to get free. Hallelujah, to be free indeed. To be free in Jesus. See, this Jew, these Jewish believers, oh, come on, come on. Follow the law. You know, all these rules, all these regulations. Come back, come back, come back, come back. And they're like, but I heard this message about Jesus, and I could be free. Come on, come back this way. Come back into tradition. Come back into this. Come back into that. And they're like, I heard this message about Jesus. And they're just wavering. And there's no peace. And they're being tossed true, to and fro. Too many voices. Too many voices in there. Tossed to and fro. And whoever the writer of Hebrews is, is saying, you can enter into his rest. Oh, hallelujah, but don't neglect this faith. Don't neglect this word that you've hear, heard. The longer you don't take care of it, the longer you're going to battle, the longer you're going to war, the longer you're going to struggle. And I'm telling you, he's the, he's the God of all. 
You are not more powerful than him. You are not stronger than him. Hallelujah. It's easier to obey. So I don't know what you're dealing with this morning. I don't know what you're facing. But I'm here to tell you the battle is not yours. The battle is the Lord's. See, you want you want the Lord saying, I, I got this. And you keep trying to fight it. You keep thinking you're going to overcome it, but you can't because you need the Lord's help. You need the Lord's help to overcome it. Verse 14, seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession, for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. God doesn't know what I'm going through. Really? <laughs> really? He doesn't know what you're going through. He never felt what you felt. He never felt abandonment. Who was at the cross? Where did they all go? Peter, Acts 2.38 message. What happens? You deny him three times. The Lord walked alone at times. The God of this universe robes himself in flesh and has to walk alone at times. See, don't fight the loneliness sometimes. Because when you feel lonely, that's when he shows up. Be real with you today. That lady back there translating behind that window. I love her, man. She's awesome, man. We have our moments, but she's awesome. And I never wanted to go anywhere without her. I just love her, you know. But then we start the Spanish word. And we're always going in different directions. <laughs> you know. But I've had those moments with God alone. And I had them in my prayer closet. But there's times where I went to preach and I'm traveling alone. And it's just God and I in that car. Come on. If you get away from those moments with God, you're going to continue to struggle and not enter his rest. But if you will get alone with God and say, God, I need your help. And if you have unbelief, if you have doubt, tell him. It's not that he doesn't know it. He won't even tell God, because, but he knows it already. Tell God, I'm struggling with this, God. God, I don't know if I believe this or that. God, I, I have all these crazy, all, all this stuff going on. Get alone with him. Speak to him like a friend. Speak to him like you know him. Come on, I better not get on that, but don't let Facebook be your answer to every problem. Sorry, I'm sorry, I got to stay off that. If it wasn't, okay. God and Jesus, help us, Lord. Amen. <laughs> he understands. He was touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Whew. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Whatever you're struggling with today, 2 Corinthians 12, 9, and he said unto me, my grace it's sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities and in reproaches and necessities and persecutions and distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Come on, you may feel weak today because you're struggling with something or you can't get over something or you got a hurt in your heart from something somebody said to you. But if you'll lay it down at this altar, I 
Hallelujah. That weakness that you feel today will become a strength because you might forgive your brother. You might forgive your sister. You might walk in oneness with God. You might walk in oneness with your brother and sister. But the longer that you don't obey God, the longer you will war, the longer you will struggle, the longer you will battle with Him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Matthew. Hallelujah. Chapter 11, verse 28. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart. And you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Hear me. Some of you have yoked yourself with things. You have yoked yourself with pains and hurts. And you say, I'm yoking it right here. I'm not going to. It's going to stay right here with me because it's too hard to get rid of it. It's just too much. He says, if you will just come unto me, I will take that yoke off of you. And I will become yoked with you. And you'll begin to walk with the Lord step by step by step. And guess what happens when you walk with the Lord? Brother Blackford, you know, brother. You know, man, all these years. The peace. The peace. Right, Elder Ron? Right, Brother Ron? The, the peace that will, comes on your life. Come on. Some of the, you guys are long time in this. I'm, about, I'm a little over 20 years in this. 20 years. And in high school, they said, he'll go back to partying. He'll go back to drinking. No, I carried that Bible through the hallways. I carried that Bible through the hallways. And I never went back. Because this is too good. This is too good. This is too good. This is too good. Jesus' name, baptism. It's too good. Getting the Holy Ghost and watching people get It's too good, right, sister friend? It's too good. You can't go back on it now. Hallelujah, it's the time to move forward. It's the time to come to peace with the Lord. Whatever you're struggling with, whatever you're warring with today, give it to Him. Woo! I'm almost done. Hang in there. I'm almost done. John 7, 37, in the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Woo! Rivers of living water. How many of you got living water in you today? How many of you have been filled with the Holy Ghost? Woo! Woo! But this spake he of the Spirit, they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Come on. Jesus was telling them, the promise of the Father is coming. You're going to be filled with his Spirit. You're going to enter into a peace. You're going to enter into a rest with the Lord. Musicians can come. I just moved my scripture. Hallelujah. John 14. I'm going to close here. Hallelujah. Now, you think, how in the world, Brother Bobby, could you live in the midst of these college football players? Every ungodly thing happening in that dormitory. How could you stay through all? I had nowhere to go. Second year, I got into a Christian home, thank God. <laughs> but see, year one, I hadn't received the apostolic doctrine. I hadn't received it yet. But I had the Holy Ghost, and God was holding on to me. 
in the midst of all that debauchery and wickedness and evilness and alcoholism and all of that. Because he said, guess what? Here too, I'm bringing truth to you. I'm bringing truth to you. That's the power of the Holy Ghost. I don't know what you're facing at work. I don't know what you're facing in your home. But if, if you work with some people that are just crazy, and they've lost their mind, and they say, hey, you want to go out and party this weekend? You're like, nah, I got something greater than that. Come on, hang on. Hang on. Hallelujah, because the Holy Ghost is so good. If you stay strong, you're going to win them instead of them winning you. John 14, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. And whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. Don't lose it down here because there's a mansion waiting and the Lord is waiting. We want to look upon him face to face. Hallelujah. The time is wrapping up. The end is here. Hallelujah. But I believe before he wraps it all up that we're going to see a move of God in this place. That there's not going to be room enough to contain it. But what God is asking for you today, in order to see that revival, get out of your weariness. Get out of your laboring. Get out of your warring. Get out of your strife. Some of you are in strife with the Lord. Let go of it. Say, God, whatever you got to do in me, whatever I need to do to obey. Last, last thing. Let's all stand. John 14. Now, you can go, go home and read that for homework. Because there's a great... Philip asked Jesus, how can we know the way? I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Have I been so long with you, Philip? He wants, him to, he wants Jesus to show him the Father. Have I been so long with you? Yet thou hast not known me. Come on, Jesus is walking right by the side of some of you. And he's saying, have you not known me? He can bring your peace today. Hallelujah. Last scripture, and we're going to come to this altar. We're going to give it all to him. Verse 26, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I've said unto you, peace, I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth. Give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Come on, saint of God. Come on, if you don't know the Lord today, come out of the world. Come out of the world. Come down to this altar and give it all to him. Give it all to him today and be free in Jesus. Be free indeed. Don't hold on to it. Don't hold on to it. Come on, this altar is open. Saints of God begin to intercede for souls in this place. This altar is open. Oh, hallelujah, don't leave here without coming down and getting free in Jesus. Free in Jesus. I'm free indeed. I'm free indeed.